You know, when I was a kid and I went to school, the teachers were trying to teach us to share. They said, if you bring some candy, you can't eat it all yourself, you've got to share it with the other kids. But now the administration says teachers should be teaching kids to say yes to licensing. If you bring some software to school, oh no, don't share it. Sharing means you're a pirate. Sharing means you'll be put in jail. That's not the way society should work. We need the goodwill, the willingness to help other people, at least when it's not too hard, because that's the basis of society. That's the fundamental resource that gives us a society instead of a dog-eat-dog -dog jungle. So what about people that say that if you have rampant piracy, it'll eliminate the profit mode and then in the creative works software will not be Well, they're, they're wrong on both counts. For one thing, people are making a profit from developing free software. But for another, the freedom to have a community is more important. Open source is a way for people to collaborate on software without being encumbered by all of the problems of intellectual property, having to negotiate contracts every time you buy a piece of software, have a lot of lawyers involved. In general, we just want to get the software to work, and we want to be able to have people contribute fixes to that, etc. So we sort of sacrifice some of the intellectual property rights and just let the whole world use the software. Richard Stallman as the great philosopher, right? And think of me as the engineer. Richard Stallman is the founding father of the free software movement. Through his efforts to build the GNU operating system, he created the legal, philosophical, and technological foundation for the free software movement. Without these contributions, it's unlikely that Linux and open source would have evolved into their current forms today. I joined the MIT Artificial Intelligence Lab in 1971. I joined a thriving community of hackers, people who loved programming, loved exploring what they could do with computers, and they had developed a complete operating system, entirely written there, and I became one of the team that continued to improve the operating system, adding new capabilities. That was my job, and I loved it. We all loved it, that's why we were doing it. And <clears throat> we called our system the incompatible time-sharing system, which is an example of the playful spirit which defines a hacker. Hackers are people who enjoy playful cleverness. Well, it first started going wrong as the outside world started pressuring us to have passwords. We didn't have any passwords on our computer. And the reason was that the hackers who'd originally designed the system realized that passwords were a way that the administrators could control all the users. And they didn't want to build tools, you know, locks and keys for the administrators to control them. So they just didn't do it. They left that out. And we had the philosophy that whoever is sitting at the computer should be able to do whatever he wants, and somebody else who was there yesterday shouldn't be controlling what you do today. Where did the ideas that led to what is now called open source, where, how did that begin? Who, who began that? Well, it actually began with the start of computers, because at that time, software was just passed around between people. And I think it was only like in the late 70s, early 80s, that people started really closing up their software and saying, no, you can never get a look at the source code. You can't change this software, even if it's necessary for you to fix it for your own application. And um, you can actually blame some of that on Microsoft. They were one of the real pioneers of the proprietary software model. Uh, we decided early on that what we needed a, a, a definition. We needed a kind of meta license to define the term open source. And what we came up with is a document called the Open Source Definition. It's derived from the Debian Free Software Guidelines that were originally written by Bruce Perens. I had written the original draft of that, uh, discussed it for a month with the Debian developers. Debian is a Linux distribution, and made it their project policy. And Eric and I decided to relabel what we'd written for Debian as the open source definition and to say open source is software that gives you a list of nine rights, which is in the open source definition. 
The first right is free redistribution. This doesn't mean free as in no price, it means liberty. Um, you have to be free to redistribute your software to someone else, and actually no price is a side effect. You can charge for that redistribution or not. It has to come with source code so that someone can maintain a program. If they go from a PC to a Mac, for example, they can change the software. Derived works have to be possible. If someone has to improve your program, um, they should be able to distribute the result. Uh, there's a provision about integrity of the author source code, which says that the author can sort of maintain their honor, and if you make a change, you might have to change the name of the program or mark out your change very clearly so that your change doesn't reflect on the author. There is no discrimination against people or groups. Uh, the example I usually use is you can't stop an abortion clinic or an anti-abortion activist from using the software. Uh, there's no discrimination against fields of endeavor, and that means the software has to be usable in a business as well as in a school. The license has to be distributable. In other words, um, I have to be able to give that license to someone, and that license then should work if that someone gives it to yet a third person. Uh, the license can't be specific to a product. In other words, if I um, distribute my software on a Red Hat system, the license can't say, you can't distribute this on a SUSE or a Debian system. The license can't contaminate other software. So if I distribute this on a CD with another program, it can't say that other program must be free, otherwise you can't distribute my software. Uh, and then the only other part of the open source definition is a list of licenses that were accepted. And the ones that we started with were the GPL, which was actually the example for a lot of what's in the open source definition, the BSD license, because software for BSD system pre-existed Linux. You can be a hacker in all sorts of different media. Programming is just one of them. Pirates are people who attack ships. People who share, share software are good neighbors.